All right, how are you guys doing? Thank you so much for coming. You guys having fun or what? Welcome. All right, so uh, quick introduction. My name is Kevin. Uh, I actually work full-time for a Web 2.0 company, uh, Nginx, you might have heard of them, uh, most popular web server out there. Uh, but I also uh, am a part-time developer advocate for Scaffold ETH. Oh, thank you. Uh, and I work basically in the Build Guild. If you're not familiar with the Build Guild, it's basically a group of developers that uh, like to build on Ethereum. Uh, most of them are fond of Scaffold ETH, which I'm gonna be talking a lot about today. Um, and I also have a nonprofit that I'm, I founded in California uh, just to kind of educate people about uh, blockchain, specifically Ethereum. Uh, I'm also a mentor for Growic, which is a, a free solidity track. You guys, if you're interested in that, it's a free track and uh, it's basically an eight week cohort where you can learn more about solidity. And I'm a photography and filmmaker. You'll see me running around. I'm actually shooting photos for the event today. So anyways, that's me. That's my contact info if you guys want to follow me at all. Um, so what is Scaffold ETH? So um, most of what I'm going to be doing today is actually a demo, but I just want to give you guys a brief kind of overview of how it works um, and what you need to get kind of going and get set up. Uh, you need Git, obviously, because you need to be able to check out the repository. Uh, and then you need Node.js and Yarn installed. Um, Node.js is pretty much the prerequisite. You need at least version 16 or above, so make sure you have that. Make sure you have the newest version of Yarn. Don't be using like an old version of Yarn on Linux. There's this kind of old version of Yarn that doesn't work properly. Uh, so just get the newest version of Yarn and then you'll be good to go. That's really the only uh, tools you need to get going. It's gonna spin up hard hat for you. So hard, hard hat's like one of the main components to Scaffold ETH uh, as well as React. So it's gonna spin up React for you and it's gonna do a lot of like the magic that you don't have to worry about like setting up a, a, a hackathon project or any, any Web3 Ethereum based project can be a hassle because you gotta spin up all these different programs and make them talk to each other and figure out how you're gonna inject your ABI into React and yada yada. Everything's kind of already done for you and I'm gonna kind of show what, what that kind of looks like. Um, and then everything, obviously, that I'm going to talk about today is based on Solidity. So, you know, we compile our com contracts in Solidity, um, uh, and that is pretty much the, you know, the con smart contract language of, of choice for uh, Scaffold ETH. Um, so if you're a developer, how, how do you spin it up? So the first thing you're going to do is clone the repository. You're going to do everything is based on Yarn, uh, Yarn uh, scripts. Uh, if you're not familiar with Yarn, Yarn's really awesome because it is a package manager, but it also allows you to run these cool like kind of command line scripts with simple commands. So you can just be like Yarn this, Yarn that, Yarn whatever. Uh, so Yarn install is going to do all the dependencies for you and install all the prerequisites. So you don't really need to like figure out what version of uh, this particular React you want to use or uh, Hard Hat. It's going to do that for you based on the current version of Scaffold ETH. And then you're going to run Yarn Chain. That's going to spin up your blockchain, Hard Hat, right, running locally. And then you're going to run React on localhost 3000 uh, using Yarn Start. So it's Yarn Install, you only do that once, Yarn Chain to spin up your blockchain, Yarn Start to spin up React, and then you do a Yarn Deploy. And what that is going to do is going to use Hard Hat to take the, there's, there's kind of like a Hello World smart contract I'm going to show you. We're going to start toying with it uh, and it's going to ship it and deploy it. And that's going to also automatically inject the ABI. So if you don't know what an ABI is, it's basically the, the way that the smart contract, uh, your front end can interact with that smart contract in a way because um, obviously when you compile down your smart contract into bytecode, uh, it's not human readable. Specifically, it's not readable from your front end either. So as you interact with your application, pretty simple, uh, you start to form blocks and you can start testing, right? And every time you do a deploy, it gets a fresh copy of your smart contract and we'll show what that looks like as well. Uh, so that's pretty much all the slides. I don't like doing slides because slides are, are pretty boring. So let's just get right into it. Um, so if you go, if you do a search for Scaffold ETH, the first one's going to come up is going to be the GitHub repository. So um, the primary repository for that actual Scaffold ETH is here, Scaffold ETH. There's also this like challenges directory, which is linked to like the speedrun Ethereum challenges, which I'm going to talk about in a second. And then there's some examples as well. So the cool thing about it is like you can find like ERC 721 example. You can find an ERC 1155 example. Uh, there's pretty much an example for like everything you need to know uh, or need to build on top of. So it's a great starting point for hackathon projects, right? You don't have to worry about, you know, injecting the um, open Zeppelin contracts. They're already pretty much set and ready to go. It's even got a little bit of a front end going for you. It's already got Ethers.js hooked up. It's already got your ABI plugged in, yada, yada. Everything's kind of set up. So if you, like as an example, let's just say you went to like scaffold ETH examples and then you did a search here. You could type like ERC 
There's an ERC-20 demo. There's a simple ERC-721, 1155. And you can kind of pick and choose like from that starting point. And that's a per perfectly valuable starting point for your hackathon project, okay? Um, but we're gonna be focusing on scaffolding, the, the actual main build. Uh, and that's where you should really, if you're just like toying around and like building, uh, you're gonna use that. Uh, by the way, all the instructions of everything I said is gonna be inside of the repository as well. So like the yarn, yarn install, yarn chain, yarn start. And pretty much everything I'm gonna go through today is in here. So don't feel like you have to follow along. I'd rather you guys just kind of watch me do it. And then um, unless you're really good, you can follow along. Um, and then after you get Scaffold D set up, I always recommend people if they're still learning to go to Solidity by example and like copy and paste stuff from Solidity by example into your smart contract and, and start testing that way. Once you get like comfortable with Solidity, that's when you'll say, okay, well, I wanna like test my abilities. This is outside of obviously the, the hackathon, but when you wanna start learning more, Speedrun Ethereum is a great resource. Now it's um, a basically like a set of challenges that you go through and real quickly, one simple challenge zero is you build a simple NFT. Challenge one is you build a decentralized staking app, a token vendor, a dice game, and you go through and eventually you get invited to the build guild, right? So, uh, and then you can actually start kind of being part of the build guild community. And then you, you obviously get access to special chat channels too as well, where you can like talk to the uh, developers and the other builders uh, and kind of work together to kind of solve these challenges. It gets really hard after challenge four. So if you can get through these challenges, um, it's a lot of fun. All right, that's enough shill about that, but um, this is a good, it, scan this if you wanna know anything about Scaffold ETH. All the links for Scaffold ETH are in this one high hello card, so if you're interested in that, scan that. I'll give you guys just one quick second. And then I'm also gonna give a POAP away. So uh, come see me afterwards, and I will uh, bring this up and you guys can scan the, the POAPs as well, okay? So let's, uh, let's get going here. So. Um, I, I use Tmux, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Tmux, but it's basically like a, a terminal multiplexer. It allows you to have more than one window open at a time. You can do this in, in multiple windows, but the general like rule of thumb is you need like three windows open when you're working with Scaffold ETH, okay? Um, the first window is pretty much where you're gonna uh, do the Yarn uh, install. So you're gonna set up, install the dependencies. I've gone ahead and done that. It takes a little bit over a minute to do, okay? But once you get it set up, you don't have to do that again. You're good to go. Then all you have to do is do a yarn chain. Yarn chain is gonna spin up block the hard hat node. It's gonna run on localhost, that's it. You can pretty much leave that window open all the time. Uh, I like to have it just here in the corner because like you might use hard hat console to like print stuff to that console and you might wanna like debug your contract. And then over here in a new window in the same directory, you're gonna do a yarn start. Okay, so what's that gonna do? It's gonna spin up React on local localhost 3000. That's gonna take about a minute, so we will let that do its thing. Um, and then the last command, if you guys remember, yarn deploy, right? So through those three commands, basically we've deployed a DAP locally on our local host. We can see here that we, we saw some contract calls. Uh, let me zoom out a little bit. We, we have some contract calls. We have some, uh, it tells us how much gas was used. We can see that React just started on the right. Now we see more contract calls and we see that how much uh, gas was used to deploy our contract on the bottom. We even have our address. So we get this kind of like cool printout. It tells us how long it took. Um, let's take a look at, at Scaffold ETH. So it says I'm on mainnet. Oh, let me disconnect from uh, MetaMask. Okay, so this is Scaffold ETH. So when you first get in Scaffold ETH, uh, it's basically React, right? But what's cool about it is it has all this stuff already ready for you, okay? Um, this first app home, you can think of this tab here, like everything in here is like where you would build your dApp that you're actually building for the hackathon. It's like your dApp inside of Scaffold ETH, right? And this is a special app.jsx file that's inside React and you can just build around that, right? So you can inherit all of the you know, components that you have in React and whatnot. Um, but what's cool is this debug contract, debug contracts folder. So what this does is essentially takes a copy of your contract and it builds like a full functional like debug UI for you. So it has your, your variables, your, your functions, it has your contract address, it has the value stored in that all in this one location. And then you can really like kind of like test your assumptions as you're like developing, right, in Solidity. So uh, let's take a look at what that contract uh, looks like. So Adam, I'm gonna use Adam. Um, you, know, you can use whatever you want, but obviously Adam is, is uh, just a basic text editor. And what do we got here? Um, we got a packages folder, and then we have a hard hat folder, and then we have a, a React folder, okay? 
Uh, most of everything I'm gonna show you today is really in the hard hat folder. And we're gonna be working out of the contracts folder. And inside of that is your contract. Okay, so this is kind of like the de facto hello world contract that comes with it. So we can see here that we define a version of Solidity, we define a license, we import hardhat console so that we can do some logging to the hardhat console, we name our contract, and we also have like an event that we're, we're doing that, that, that basically broadcasts the address that calls the purpose function and the string that they pass into that function. And then we have a, another variable that we define and then we have the empty constructor, which is not doing anything, but we could do that. And I'll show you about that in a little bit. And then we have set purpose, which is a function that allows us to change that, that variable, right? We have this kind of like public, public uh, variable here. We could change it here. Like if we say unstoppable like that, and then save that, and then do another deploy. And by the way, you might want to reset and force a deploy sometimes. Just do dash dash reset, and it will force a new contract to be deployed. So I just did that small change, and then now we can look at the change here. It's been changed in here, right? Um, and so you're able to kind of just do your changes to the smart contract, deploy, go back, start testing. Um, that's obviously just a very simple test, but let's get going a little further down the contract, okay? Uh, then we have inside this set purpose function, it just takes a, it takes a variable, essentially a string, and passes it to the new purpose. And then we log that with console log using hard hat console and then we emit that event, right, so that the, uh, we can capture the event and see that. So it's a pretty smart, it's like it's just a hello world. It's, very, it's, it's like the simple uh, starter contract. Let's, like, let's make some changes. Let's make some interesting stuff. So the first thing you'll learn, uh, you might want to do some kind of like access control. So let's just do like a quick uh, kind of like janky access control. Uh, we'll make it owner, sorry, owner public, or address public owner equals, and we'll go back to our thing here, and what do we see up here on the top right? So this is a burner wallet, okay? The burner wallet's cool because you don't have to have MetaMask installed, it's just using a browser wallet, and if like you were to look up, lo open up another tab, you still have access to that because it's in the browser, right? So you don't lose it. But if you were to come over here and say, oh well, new incognito window, and do localhost 3000, we would get a new instance of a of burner wallet because it's an incognito one, right? So let's leave that open for right now because we're gonna get back to that in a second. But my point is that we can just use this wallet and it's empty right now, but we can just grab some funds from the faucet, click in that button. We can even grab more funds if we want. You can grab the address, we can come down here to the, to the faucet and say, oh, I want like way more. Uh, let me give me like, I don't know, a thousand bucks send. I'm able to just grab that, that, those funds from Hardhat, just dump them into my burner wallet. So I'm instantly ready to test. I don't have to worry about MetaMask and nonces and any of that junk, right? Um, so let's, let's make a change. Let's grab this address, okay? And we want to do like access control. So now we have access to this wallet. By the way, the private key is here as well. So you can export the private key that it generates. So it's a full functional wallet, right? You can also import a private key. So if you just want to use like some one that you keep, keep using. Um, and then let's go to the thing and let's define that variable, save it and then redeploy, okay? Let's make sure it deploys correctly first, which it does, okay? And then now what do we see? We got a new variable, owner, right? So what we could do is say like, all right, let's make sure that only someone who calls this function here is an owner, uh, like an access controlled uh, function. We could do something like a require statement, right? And we could say require that the message that sender uh, is equal, equal to owner, otherwise you are not allowed to call this. I don't know, something like that. <laughs> um, so what I'm doing here is I'm just basically like toying around with my smart contract, redeploying my changes. Instantly I was able to get up and running with ADAPT uh, and testing my assumptions. Uh, so there we go. Um, we have our contract, we got a new one. And then now if I wanna come over here to this incognito tab, get some funds, go to the debug contracts and try to change the purpose, I don't know, to foo like this. It's gonna say, you're not allowed to call this, right? I've done some basic access control, right? But if I come over here and I can say foobar, send, and it lets me, right? So good, bad, right? Uh, but let's, let's go a little further. Let's, let's actually like wipe out like this concept of like hard-coded addresses and let's use, anyone familiar with Open Zeppelin? Open Zeppelin, right, awesome. If you don't know Open Zeppelin, gotta follow those guys. Um, the first thing, the second thing you'll learn with smart contracts is inheritance. So we can see right here, we can do like an import, right? We can import an open Zeppelin contract, and then we can make our contract 
inherited from that, right? And you'll see a lot of the examples like ERC20 example, ERC1125, 721, use this import and inheritance function. So we, let's do that and then let's save that and then let's deploy again. So instead of doing a hard-coded owner, we're just doing this inheritance method and we don't have only owner, that's the other thing we gotta do is we gotta inherit the modifier. Um, so instead of using a require statement, we're using a modifier, which is part of inherited uh, access control ownable contract. But you can see what we're doing. We're, we're toying around, let me deploy again, because I forgot that, and then let's go back. But what, what's different now? Someone want to tell me what's different? The owner address, it's unexpected. What owner address is that? It's just a random string, right? Well, Hardat uses the very first uh, uh, contract address, or I should say the first, like, uh, it has a set of 20 uh, accounts. It uses the first account to deploy the smart contract. So what's happened is we've had Hardhat deploy our contract, but it's hold on to the contract. Now we, can't, we don't have any access control because before we had hard-coded hard the, hard the owner. So the next thing you'll learn, you'll learn with Scaffold E is that you need to be able to um, change the deployment. So if you look right below the contract folder, there's a deploy script, okay? And this is where, when you do a yarn deploy, this is what's, what's being processed, right? This is what's running. And you can see here that we get a copy of our contract. Uh, we, we set the deployer as the deployer, which is from the named accounts coming from, from uh, uh, Hardhat. And then we can see here that we get an instance of the contract. And so in this script now, we have a copy of the contract here. So what we, what we can do is call an inherited function, right? And if you know ownable or ownable, uh, open Zeppelin ownable, it has what's called transfer ownership function, okay? And you'll even see it down here on the bottom because we inherit it and you can see it's right there. So now what we need to do is actually transfer the ownership of our smart contract to us. And so we can grab that address again like this. And then you actually, you can see right here that we have, uh, I, I have it like kind of like grayed out in there. Uh, so we can just grab that. And then here we can take the contract call the transfer ownership, and then put the address in here. So sorry, let me grab it again. And then save, and then redeploy. Give it one sec, that worked nice and fast. And now you can see that it, owns, it matches again. So we deployed the smart contract, called the transfer ownership function, and transferred it to ourself. So that's cool. We, we've been able to kind of toy around with our contract, and you see how you get in this kind of loop where you like, like I said, you have hard at running, you have React, React open, you're testing your, your smart contract, building some stuff, um, and then you just kind of start ch testing those changes. Um, and you can even do things like, um, I'll just do a couple more things here just to show you. We're done with the deploy script, so we're good. Now we have kind of access control. Let's pretend that we don't want to actually call only owner on that function because it's kind of boring to have like one function that only the owner can call. Let's make it a public function. But we could do something like, um, let's require, uh, like a amount of value uh, is sent. Um, let's do two, you want 256 public price equals, I don't know, point, uh, 0 0.001 ether. So we can set a, 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 a variable price. And then we can come over here and then we can get back into our requirements, right? And we can say something like require uh, message.value, which is the, the transaction value is equal, equal to price. Or we say not or enough, something like that, right? So now what, if we deploy our change, which, uh, oh, sorry, when I always forget this, you have to make the, because it's, we're accepting value now, you gotta make it a payable function. So let's make it payable, save that, and deploy. Did I spell it wrong? <laughs> I did, thank you. Let's try it one more time. But you guys can see how, how easy it is with Scaffold to get up and running with a project, um, you know, using this and start doing some changes. So cool, now we have a function, but what do you see? Well, the UI is adapted and it said, oh, well now we need to pass some value. So then you can start testing and we even have that new variable here which is showing you the value in way. So um, the first thing, another thing you'll learn about, you know, when you're uh, writing smart contracts is you need to send your transactions in way and not in ether. And so, um, you know, what this does is it kind of just gives you the variable. And if you didn't have this variable here, like you could use this little cool green little icon that does the math for you, which one ether is uh, equal to times 10 to the 18th power in way. So what we could do is say, okay, well now we have this, this function, we want to change it 
let's set the purpose to Bogota. And then we have to pass in, if we were to pass 0, 0, 0, 1 ether, sorry, let me do 0 just so that doesn't freak out, and then click this little button, that would be the wrong amount. It's going to tell me not enough, right? But I could just grab this and copy this, paste it here, send, boom, it worked. So now what happens with our smart contract? We have, it has value, right? Now it's actually storing some value, which is cool. Uh, it's like this little vending machine, right? So we could probably write like a withdraw function in there. That would be cool, right? And then we, that one, we would definitely want only owner, right? <laughs> so we could use that only owner modifier. Uh, but let's just do one more thing that I just want to show you with like one small change. You could do something at the very bottom of your function that says price equals to price, I don't know, times two, like that. And then deploy that change. And with one small line in the contract, you completely change the behavior of, the, of this um, kind of vending machine. It deployed successfully, and now if we change the uh, thing to, I don't know, uh, Columbia, boom, send. Now we'll see that the price adjusted, right? We did this simple modifier, right? Okay, so I think you guys get the idea. It's, it's, it's just kind of like toying and like tinkering around with your smart contracts, uh, testing your assumptions with multiple identities, right? Multiple browsers. Um, if you have problems and you wanna like, uh, you know, uh, if you have any issues, there's a Telegram channel for getting uh, getting like uh, problems resolved. Um, I'll be around. I'll be shooting photos, uh, but I'm more than happy to help you guys out if you have questions. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what I want to go over. Uh, any questions? I'll try to get least time for questions. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're, um, yeah, if you're, I mean, are you saying like for a test net? Oh, so let me, let me kind of show you real quick. You can generate an account. So you can do yarn, uh, here, let me open this so it's full screen. You can do yarn run generate. And what that's going to do is generate a special deployer mnemonic. It's going to place it inside of your uh, uh, directory, which I won't click on it, but it's right here. So it has the, the, the deployer address, and the mnemonic is in there. So you can inject that into MetaMask as well, so you have access to it. And then you can do a Yarn account like this. Um, and you can also, like, what I do is, like, I have a punk wallet on my phone, and it pops up a QR code for you. It goes by real fast. But you can just scan the QR, send some funds to that one, and then now you have this kind of, like, wallet that you have access to the private key, right? No, no. This is a, it's stored right here on your thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's your deployer account. So yeah, that's a good question. I was gonna show that, but I didn't have enough time and I, don't, I wanna be respectful of other people. I was gonna deploy it and you can also verify your contract with a Yarn Verify. Um, you can do all this cool stuff. Uh, you can also do Yarn Surge and you can upload your, um, your dApp. Like you can build it with Yarn Build and then Yarn Surge and it'll upload it to Surge. You can also Yarn IPFS and push it to IPFS. So there's all this stuff that's just already written for you. You don't have to hassle with it. Just take a look at the package JSON file and it has all the Yarn commands. And yet, one more question? Yeah. Um, testing, testing, writing tests, uh, are they supposed to have that? No, there is a test in there. So you can do like a yarn test, and there's a, there's a test in the hard hat test, and you can create and build around that. Um, if, if I did it right now, it would fail because the test is designed for like the hello world one that comes with it. Um, but yeah, you can definitely just do a hard hat test. And I think that directory is uh, right here, test, my test. And you just, you write it like a normal hard hat test. So it uses chai basically, hard hat and chai. Yeah, one more, yep. So uh, there's a sneak peek. There might be a future version of uh, Scaffoldy that has Foundry. Um, there actually is one, I think someone's already built actually, that um, it's not, I don't think it's in here yet, but I would just keep an eye on the repository here and see, I could actually check right now. Um, oh, there is one. Yeah, so there is one with Foundry, I think. I think it's kind of like, yeah, I don't know if it's been tested too much, but um, probably not the recommended one to, to use for this hackathon, but um, yeah, looks like there's already one. Yeah. Thank you guys. Appreciate it.